Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. My name is Brad Tallis and today we're going to continue working on the part we started with last week. Uh, we kind of ran out of time so we're going to work on some of these smaller parts at the bottom and then we're going to start working on this other side and it's kind of hard to see because it's black but you can kind of see some parts inside there. Um, Again, I have Angelo online. He's helping me answer some questions. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them out there in the chat. Um, I'm actually gonna start with um, a tip that I'm gonna have to give a shout out to Blaze Barrett and Carl Baker. Um, I always forget about this trick or this tip. Um, last week I showed, I wanted to make this line to be centered um, you know, to kind of just create the profile of the uh, pencil sharpener. And so I showed how you can create a line that goes to the midpoint right here. So you can kind of see how it snaps to the midpoint. And then I forced that line to be a vertical line. And sure enough, it made that line be where I wanted it to. And I'm able to move it up and down but there's a better way and i always forget about this better way so without having to create that extra line so what i want is i want this line the, the center of it to be lined up with this uh in vertical with it i guess so i'm going to say horizontal vertical and watch what happens when i hover over this line like nothing shows up but as soon as i hold down my shift key you'll see that it will snap to the midpoint so I can click there so I'm saying I want that midpoint to be in line or vertical with that point there and notice how it snaps over and I'm still able to move that line up or down so virtual high five to Carl and to blaze I think this is a way better way of doing it I always forget that we have that um, it's kind of hidden. You have to remember to hold down the shift key. So I wanted to start out with doing that first. Okay. Um, so I, I ran out of time last week. Um, and we have a couple more features to add. Let me uh, go back to my camera here real quick. There's these, um, let me go over here. These little ribs right here that kind of help line things up. And then there's this little rectangular port um, that the power... Um, switch or power whatever port <laughs> is located so we're gonna work on that I did put the outline and the drawing for today uh, in the description of the video uh, if you want to download that at a later time okay so I want to continue on I'm gonna create those those little uh, ribs over here so I'm gonna start by just clicking on this face, this front face here, and creating a sketch. Now, one thing I wanna make sure is notice because, um, let me, in fact, I'll close this. Since I brought this up, my default active component is my top level component. I wanna make sure that I'm making my base be my active component, okay? Otherwise, everything I do will be put underneath this guy. I want it to be underneath the base, okay? So make sure I do that first. Then I can come in here and create a sketch on that face. And then I'm gonna project. I want, I want to kind of capture this curve right here. So P for project, hopefully you all know that shortcut. And I'm just gonna click on this curved face. So it's gonna project that edge for me. You can see how it kind of turned purple right there. Okay, then I'm just going to draw a line. I'm just going to get near this edge and you'll notice it kind of turns to an X. That means it's going to capture right onto that line. It's going to be coincident with it. And I'll make sure I'm pointing horizontal and type in the distance of 0.15. And again, I'm getting that from the drawing. Okay. Now, I want to um, finish constraining this sketch, so I'm going to add a dimension down here to like this base or this origin right here. And I want this to be about one and a quarter up. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, the line uh, changes color from blue to black. 
and that means that it's fully constrained. Okay, so I could have drawn a rectangle and extruded that rectangle, but I really like this web command. So I'm gonna say web. I'll go ahead and click on this edge and you'll notice something happen, okay? It allows me to change the thickness, okay? And I want the thickness to be uh, 0 0.04 but you'll notice it's going past this line and that's this extend curve. So I'm gonna turn that guy off and now it's creating a web the exact length of that line, 0.15, but it's also basically, you know, extruding it back to this curved surface, okay? Okay, then I want that to follow along down here. So I'm going to do a pattern on a path. So instead of a rectangular pattern, which would go straight down, I'm gonna say pattern on a path. And again, this is another reason why I like doing things in 3D instead of 2D. I could have drawn multiple lines, but I couldn't have done a pattern of those because um, there isn't pattern on a path in 2D. So I'm gonna say pattern on a path. I'm gonna do a feature and we'll select the web feature it's asking for the path. I'll go ahead and click on the edge there and start to drag and you can see how it's following that path even though it's curved like so. Okay, pretty cool option. Um, for the uh, extent, I'm doing the, the extent here. I'll say uh, 0.3 it equally spaces those and I'll say okay. Now for you eagle-eyed people, you'll notice there's a little V notch right here. And if I zoom up, we can kind of see that there's a space back here. And again, and again, that was because we started with this line on this projected edge. And this surface kind of curves back a little bit. And then it starts to curve that direction. And well, I don't want that gap. Okay. So I'm going to fix it by using the replace face. So what are the source faces? And notice it has an S, so I can select more than one. So I'll come in here and grab all three of these. And I'll say my target face. I'll just click on that face there. And you can see how it instantly heals that geometry. Now, is this the right way of doing it? Well, I could have done that replace face before I did the pattern, and that was probably I probably should have, instead of having to select three faces, I could have fixed it before I did the pattern. I could have also tried to use the delete face, where I just click on the face and hit the delete key. There's multiple different methods to solve this particular problem. So as you're doing this, you might try different methods and see if you get different results. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to extrude a particular region just I'm gonna call it the capital E. You can kind of see this E right here, but I have extra faces, so I can't extrude just this. It'll want to extrude way up here and down here also, and I don't want to do that. I could create a sketch, project some geometry, add some lines, that would totally work. Or I'm gonna show a command that we don't use all that often, I use split body a lot, but we also have split face. So I'm gonna say split face. What's the face to split that guy? And then what's my splitting tool? I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off first. I'm gonna say splitting tool is gonna to be this edge, okay? I'm also going to select the other, I'm sorry, I said edge should be face. I'm also gonna select this other face. So I selected this bottom face and this top face. Now watch what happens when I turn on extend splitting tools. So, so my screen kind of turns red. It's basically taking that shape and extending it. So um, it's going to make sure that it cuts through everything. And you can even see a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen right there. I'll say OK. And it used this plane, this face, to split this face. And it used this plane here to split that face. And now you'll notice that that is a separate face from here and here.
okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I want to extend this out because it actually, um, if I bring this up, you can kind of see it extends out away from the edge of the part a little bit. So that's what we're re recreating. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna say press pull. And I'm actually gonna show two different commands here, okay? Um, so let me go here, I'm gonna say press pull and watch what happens. I'm gonna kind of rotate it to the side and I'm gonna start dragging on this. And you'll notice that the E is getting smaller and smaller and it's actually following this curve of this surface. So as I'm doing the press pull, you can see how it's extending these, sorry about the flashing, but it's extending these faces out, but it's also extending this curved face out, okay? If I had done an extrude, and pull straight out, you'll notice it's just a straight line. It's just basically taking that face and adding some thickness to it. Well, I want this to kind of follow the curvature of this round object. So I'm gonna use press pull. I'll start to drag. And the distance we wanna go is 0.1. And you can see that sure enough, it's gonna extend that out. I'll say okay. And there we go. Pretty, pretty cool trick, I think. I'm gonna back up a couple steps. So we used the, um, we created a simple sketch. Let me turn on my sketches here of just a single line. And then we used the web command to create that shape, patterned it on a path, fixed the little tiny void that was in there using replace face, and then I used split face, which allows me to then pull on just the region that I want using press pull. Okay. Um, so I got a message that AL was asking, um, what exactly does the web feature do? Um, so basically, like I was showing in here, it takes a just a profile like a single line or a circle or something like that and it adds thickness to it so you can kind of see i can do symmetric thickness in one direction or symmetric and it's going to create basically a, you know it looks like a rib we call it a web and if you kind of hover over the uh, image you can kind of see what it's really doing so this is inside of a box cutter. You can just see some lines on a profile and it's gonna create the, uh, that weird shaped, um, you know, following the contours of a complex surface um, to create kind of like support material in there. So that's what the uh, web command does. So let me fast forward here. Okay, so I now have, um, that on this side and I obviously want to have it on the other side instead of recreating it I'm just going to use the mirror command and again I could do faces and you know draw a selection box and select all those faces but I personally like to say features and then I'm gonna select all of the features that has to do with this so for example the web the pattern on a path, the replace face, the split face, and the offset face. So I'm selecting all of those features in my timeline. Then my mirror plane is going to be right through the center right here. I get kind of a preview of what that's going to look like. I'll say OK. And it's going to mirror those features onto the other side. So I didn't have to recreate them. Okay, the next thing I want to do is to create the port area um, for the power plug. So I'm just going to create a quick sketch here. And let me just flip it around like so. And then I'm going to draw a rectangle. Again, I'm just kind of basically getting it onto the screen. Now I want the edge of this rectangle to touch this edge here. 
So I could come in and say coincident, click that corner and click that edge and you'll see how it jumps down and makes that edge coincident. Well, another tip, if you didn't know this, is if I just click and drag and get near that edge, you'll see that it kind of snaps to it. So I'm just dragging that corner over to here and it's gonna create the coincident constraints for me automatically. Same thing with this edge here. Notice how as I'm moving that around, or this corner I should say, that other one is staying coincident to that circular edge. So I'm just gonna get near this edge here and just drop it right there. And now you can see that no matter what I do, that rectangle is gonna stay coincident to that edge. So you can either do it by clicking on the constraints or if you just drag near them, they'll snap right to it and create the constraint for you. Let me throw a dimension on here. Um, this is supposed to be 0.33, it was pretty close. And then I want this to be in line with these circles. So can I grab that corner or whatever? You can see it's not letting me do that. So here I am gonna have to come in and say, I want um, that point to be horizontal with that point there. So they're in the same plane. And you can see it, it looks fully constrained now. I'll right click on my profile and say extrude and we'll go up 0.3 and again I'm just following um, this drawing actually this is the second drawing I didn't I don't have the first drawing I apologize um, but I'm just following along with a drawing I should have had it up um, so I'm extruding that up 0.3 now I made a mistake here I want to shell this thing out but you'll notice that it's all the same body and so if I were to try and shell this out it's gonna try and shell everything out so I'm gonna edit this feature and instead of joining it I'm gonna say new body and watch what happens over here so I'll say okay it still did the extrude but I now have this separate body okay and this is gonna allow me to now shell this and I've shown this in previous live streams I really like the shell command to create complex geometry because I can come in here and say shell I'll start to drag and you can kind of see it's creating this little pocket in here so instead of having to create another sketch or do a, a complex profile with offsets and extruding I can come in here and specify my wall thickness so 0.05 I'll say OK and I created this little port um, that the plugin will slide into now that I'm done with that I can combine so my target is going to be this main body the tool is going to be that guy there now I want to join them together and I don't need to keep the tool in this case so I'm going to turn that guy off and watch what happens to body 9 I'll say OK it goes away and this is all part of the base with floor okay kind of a, a cool method sometimes it's like, you, you like working with smaller parts of your design and then joining them and combining them together okay the last thing I need to do is there's a little tiny groove um, that goes up here and I could have done that as a part of my original profile but I forgot to so I'm going to just add it in and I'm just gonna maybe click on this top face right click and say create sketch and you'll notice it kind of came at a weird angle if you just hit the, the top it'll kind of go orthographic again then I'm just gonna create a circle that touches this existing circle and then I'll create another circle that's the, cor the correct diameter 1.58 or I could have done an offset it really doesn't matter okay so you can kind of see I'm, I'm starting to create a profile well I want it to um, not go all the way around I only want it to go halfway so let me go back this way I'll say top I'll go 
like so. Okay, so I want to basically split it so it follows this line. So I'm going to go here. You can see how it captures that corner. Now if I go straight across, it's going to want to do a horizontal line. But if I move ever so slightly and if I hover over that line, you'll see that it's going to create a parallel line which is what I want in this case. I want this edge to follow that edge. Again, I'm not having to tell it what constraint I'm wanting to do. I'm just getting near, and then you can see, if I like, for example, hover over that line, it's gonna create a parallel line. And it's cap um, coincident to this circle right here. Now I have half of a profile and you can kind of see that there okay so let's extrude this guy I like to start to drag to kind of visually see what that's gonna look like and I can see that it's in the negative direction so I'm gonna say minus um, 0 0.06 and that's how far I want it to go and I'll say okay and now I'm done with this model. So ran out of time last week to, to talk about all that, um, but now I'm done with it. So I'll go ahead and um, let me, uh, save this. Okay, so I'm gonna save this as um, a new one here. So just so I have it, I'll call it assembly two. Call that good, okay. Okay, so now let's work on the next part, or the other half of the part, I should say. So, and we're going to reuse some information here. So, I'm going to turn off that guy, and let's turn on just the base. And you'll notice, you know, we created it together, right? We, we did that complex surface, shelled it out, created the lip, um, you know, the lips connect together all that kind of stuff well now I want to start adding some extra stuff in here and we can see what's a little bit different so there's some some screw bosses up here that we're gonna add that have has a little bit of a, a web in there and then there's these little shelves I'm not sure exactly what to call them or whatever that have some screw mounts and then right here in the back is where the power cord plugs in and we're gonna create that also Okay, just so you have a, a visual reference of what we're gonna be doing here. So I want to um, reuse that last sketch. So I'm gonna turn that sketch back on and I want to create that lip on this other side of the part. So I'm gonna reuse that sketch. I'll come in here and say extrude and I'll start to extrude. Now I already forgot how far I'm supposed to extrude. So check this out. I'm going to turn on my other part, okay? And then I'm going to say, instead of distance, I'm going to say to object. And I want to grab the bottom face of this extrusion. So I'm going to click and hold. It allows me to kind of probe through. There's that bottom face. If I kept going, you could see how it's probing through all of the different faces. I'm going to probe through and grab that face, and you'll notice that it's extruding down that exact same distance. However, notice that it says join, and because both of these parts are turned on, it's going to want to join them together. So I need to make sure that I turn off this other part and then say OK, because then it's only going to join to this part. So I'll say OK. I'll turn off that sketch so you can kind of see what's going on here. And what's neat about this is if I were to change this guy, so that was this extrusion here. So if I were to change the depth there, so I'll just bring that down a little bit and say okay, it's going to, and it did a join, <laughs> um, but you can kind of see it modified the other one also. So let me uh, turn off the base when I do that. And then if I turn on the base, you'll see that it modified the base also. So that's what that two object, that's really kind of a cool tip, is to, um, instead of you know always typing in distances or whatever, 
I can say I want this extrusion to be the same as this extrusion and if this one changes that one changes so okay moving forward here so I'm going to start creating some geometry on this inside face so I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to draw that that um, screw boss basically so I'm just going to kind of draw a circle somewhere um, it is a diameter of 0.2 so I'm going to just type in 0.2 and then I'm going to position this using dimensions so I can grab and I'm going to go off of the origin in this example so that's supposed to be a 2.75 up and again according to the drawing um, 1.35 over and you can see it's fully constrained I'm gonna go ahead and draw another circle in here of um, 0.1 so you kinda of see we're building the um, kinda of that screw boss feature I like to move my dimensions out so they're not all crammed inside there so I can kinda of see the size of those dimensions okay and then there's also gonna be a um, support web right there so in fact let me drag this dimension over here and I'm just gonna draw a line so you can kinda of see I'm touching the edge of that circle and I don't care what length it is right now but what I do care is that it is horizontal with this point right here okay so you can kinda of see um, I, I clicked too many times so it says it's over constrained but you can see I brought that down it's that line is now horizontal and I'm done with my sketch so let's go ahead and extrude once again I like to start dragging in the direction that I want it to go and you'll notice that we actually have extra geometry here that's not part of the profile what I'm going to be showing here pretty soon is we're going to reuse this sketch multiple times instead of creating multiple sketches we're going to actually reuse this sketch and so um, that's why I went ahead and created this line and you'll see that as we move forward so how far do I need to go I have no idea but I can come in here and say to object I'll click on that face and it's going to extrude and follow the shape of that curvature and it's not blowing through the other side right so this two object is really handy if I had you know just said to a distance or something like that you know you could see it would actually cut through to reach as far as it needs to reach but by saying two object it knows exactly how far and what shape it needs to go so let me do that okay and I want it to join I want it to be part of that so I'm gonna say okay but you'll notice my sketch went away that little line went away well all I have to do is turn it back on and now I can come in here and say create web and again I really like this web command I can pick on that edge now this time I do want it to go all the way so I'm gonna say extend curves and you'll see if I had left it just like that you can see it's a vertical edge right there but by saying extend curves it's actually wrapping around this curved surface and it's extending to this multi curved surface over here so I didn't even have to draw the line all the way across and catch or anything like that I just kind of said here's where I want this web to be and like I said I could have drawn a rectangle but maybe I would have had to trim I'd have to select multiple profiles make sure I grabbed the right profiles this I think is just so much faster and I want it to be 0 0.04 tall so I'm just gonna say okay and there we go okay so we've created the screw boss now what I'm actually gonna be doing is only creating half of this part so instead of doing it over here we're gonna end up mirroring this uh, as we're after we're done with a bunch of different steps the next thing we're gonna create um, and again might be a little hard to see 
but there's this little shelf right here and this is where the circuit board actually slides into and you can kind of kind of see what that looks like hopefully you already know the tips and tricks I'm going to use to create that obviously we're going to use the shell command but I'm going to start with a basic shape instead of creating another sketch since these screw bosses and shelf bosses and shelves and all that kind of stuff are kind of the same thing I'm gonna use the same sketch so I'm gonna go back and edit this sketch okay then I'm just gonna start getting my shape kinda of where I want it to be or what I want it to look like so I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and I know there's one down here like so so I'm just gonna draw two rectangles then I can come in and start really defining these. So I know this one is supposed to be 0.125 by um, 0.15, like so. Okay. And I want to locate where it needs to be. I want to fully constrain this. So I click that bottom corner and I click that corner there and my dimensions at this weird angle. Well, if you're if you kind of move around, you can sort of force it to be a horizontal or a vertical, or you can right mouse click and say, "I want this to be a vertical dimension," and it's going to force it to be a vertical dimension. So I can go ahead and say that is supposed to be uh, 1.5, and then I can do the same thing here. I'll click that edge there, the origin. And if it was in the wrong orientation, I could come in here and say I want it to be a horizontal dimension. Okay. So that guy is supposed to be point, um, point 0.6, it looks like. And I am getting these um, from, from this drawing. So here's the, the size of the rectangle. Here's the point 0.6 and the 1.5. Okay. I'll do the same thing with this rectangle down here. I'll just throw a couple quick dimensions on here. Um, 0 0.35, um, 0 0.04, and then again, kind of off the origin here, I'm specifying where I want this dimension to be. So I want that to be a vertical dimension of um, 0.3, and then I'll do the same thing and that is supposed to be um, 0.35 over and now I can see that both of my sketches here are fully constrained or my both my objects are constrained in this sketch so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sketch now you'll notice that these profiles are on the same plane as this circle but according to the actual part, that's not the case. So here's a cool trick. So I'm going to grab this rectangle, I'll say extrude, start to drag, and once again I'm going to say to object, and I'll click on that inside surface, and you can see that it's going to extrude to that object. However, I don't want this to start right here. So under the start part of the extrude dialog I can say offset plane and I can tell it I want to offset or I want it to start extruding one inch so I'm going to basically say in the negative direction one you can see that right here so it's taking this profile offsetting it one inch and then starting to extrude to the object So instead of having to have a sketch on this face and then come in and do an offset plane and you know bring the offset plane in one inch and then draw another sketch to draw this and then do another sketch to do this, I'm basically using the exact same sketch, this one right here. In fact, let's do it with this guy. I'll click on that profile, say, oops, say extrude. tell it I want to go to this object like so but I want it to start in this case um, we're gonna go um, minus let me go I can't remember what my 
dimension was um, minus 0.375 okay minus 0.375 and so you'll notice it's offsetting 0.375 and then doing the extrude pretty cool now once again I made a mistake I'm getting really good at that I want to shell this guy out to create that weird C shape so I can come back to this in my timeline and say new body watch what happens when I say okay I get a new separate body Okay. now this one I'm not shelling out so I could leave that one as the join I don't care about that one I just want to be able to come back and shell this out okay so I'm going to click on a face and say shell. I'm going to start to drag so you can kind of see what's going to happen here. So because this is a separate body, you can kind of see that there, it's shelling that equal wall thickness. Well, I want it to be open on the front also, so I'm going to control select that face there, and you can see how it's opening that face. But I also don't want any thickness back here, so I'm going to control probe select and grab that face. And now you can see by using the shell command, I just used a simple shape like a rectangle. I'm able to come in and create the shelf that the circuit board is going to slide in. And I think this is supposed to be um, 0.04 like so. I'll say OK. Now it is still a separate body. You can see how it follows the shape. So let's combine that together. So what's my target? This base is my target. What's the tool? That's the tool. I want to join them together. I don't need to keep the tool, so I'll say OK. And we're back to all one object now. Okay, um, so real quick, I also get questions about, well, what about tolerances? What about gaps? What about clearances and stuff like that and drafts, etc.? I am not um, a plastics person or injection molding specialist or, you know, mechanical designer or anything like that. Obviously, since this is a plastic part, it's going to have to come out of a mold. How it's going to come out of that mold, I don't know. And what I'm really trying to teach here is different methods on using Fusion 360 to create things. You're gonna have to have the knowledge to, do I add clearance here? Do I have to have draft? Is there an undercut, that kind of a thing? If I were to add GDNT into every single feature, it would take a really, really long time. So that's why I don't do that. Um, however, it's obviously important in product design. Um, I'm just not a specialist in that, so hopefully you'll forgive me for that. Uh, I'm more showing tips and tricks and methodologies, so. Um, okay, so I do want to add some draft to, to these two parts, though. Um, because they're kind of long, they need to have a little bit of draft to them. So under Modify, I'm going to say Draft. And when it's asking for the pull direction, I kind of think of that as what are the faces that are going to be drafted? Where are they going to hinge around? So this is my face right here, my pull direction face. Now it's asking for faces. And you'll notice when I click on this face here, I'll go ahead and over exaggerate here so you can kind of see what's happening. It's, it's hinging on that face. So if I were to add in that guy, it's going to hinge on that face and even on this side if I added that face in there. So that's what this pull direction is really asking is kind of like where is the face hinging around. Now I'm going to only do one degree of draft. Now could I add these faces in here? I could, but notice that this is way farther back than that and so it would probably taper this part way, way too much. So I'm going to do that as a separate draft. So I just drafted that guy then I'll come in and draft this one down here. So this is going to be the, the face I want it to hinge on. And then if I click on that face and I click on that face, you can kind of see the one degree of draft being added into that. And it's hinging around 
these edges. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, we're getting close here. Um, now what I want to do is add this little screw boss uh, on top of here. So I want to um, create a sketch on this face. So I'm going to say create sketch. I'm going to rotate just a little bit. And I want to use information from the other model. So check this out. I'm going to turn on base with floor. And let's look down inside of here. And we can see that this little shelf is basically sitting on top of where the screw is going to come up through the part. And if I turn off this guy, there's the screw hole right there. So I'm going to use the project command. What do I want to project? I want to project this hole. And you can kind of see how it's projecting it up onto that sketch. And by having projection link turned on, if I were to change the location of this hole boss, like if it moved over a little bit, it would also move over in this sketch. And that's what's really powerful. So we used information from this other part to help us design this part. In fact, I'm going to go ahead, that's where the hole is going to come through. So I'm going to add some extra geometry on here. Let's just make that a little bit larger. I'll select that profile, right mouse click, and say extrude. Now, let me kind of back up here. Notice I'm still in my sketch. I haven't said finish sketch yet. But by pre-selecting this profile and right mouse clicking, I see this extrude command. But I also see another extrude command. This is extrude a face. This is extrude a body. So most of the time you're going to want to do this. This is more for like surfacing type stuff where you want it to be like paper thin, that kind of a deal. So I'm going to pick on this first extrude. And notice it finished my sketch for me. Okay, I didn't have to go up and say finish sketch and then come up and say extrude and then click on it. So neat little shortcut there. Um, let's go up 0.17 in this case. Okay. However, you'll notice that the hole isn't going through. I put this sketch on this top face we projected this inner circle and then I created this outer circle and we extruded it up. So I'm going to turn that sketch back on, click on that inner circle and say extrude. Now how far do I need to extrude? Well I could click on that face but I'm going to say to object and click on this face right here. Now, I used to always just click on the face and have it extrude that distance. And I've had a lot of you guys um, say, you know, it's better to do two object in case that changes or whatever. And you're absolutely correct. So I'm trying to learn to do this better. This is because of some of the tips and tricks you guys have shared with me. So, um, so use the two object as often as you can. So what I was basically saying is if I had set this to distance, and I can click on this face and you'll see it, it put that distance in there, but that is exactly how far it's going to extrude. And if we were to come back and change this thickness, this would still stay 0 0.04. Okay, so then it would no longer go through that part. By coming in here and saying to object and clicking on that face, no matter where that face goes, this has to extrude to that face. So this is a much better method. So I'll click that guy off and we can now see that there we have the whole feature going through. Um, don't like sharp corners. Let's come in here and fill it that corner. And uh, let's just do maybe, um, I don't know what size. Uh, point 0.1, I think, is what it says according to the drawing. Okay. Now there's also a support rib back here. It's kind of hard to see on camera, so I'm not going to show it. I'm going to create a, again, I'm going to use that web command to do this. 
Um, and so I'm going to create a sketch on this top face right here of the screw boss. So I'm going to say create sketch. I'll rotate it a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. I'll draw a line. Now, again, it doesn't matter where it is. All I care about is that it's vertical and that it's lined up. So I'm going to come in here and say horizontal vertical with this point right here. And you can see how it jumped over and it's now lined up perfectly with that circle. I don't have to catch to this surface back here. I don't have to catch to this edge. I just need to have a little bit of a profile for the web command. In fact, I'm going to turn off extend curve so you can kind of see what's going to happen here. But it goes down to the next depth option. So it's going down to the next boundary, which is this top face right here. And by saying extend curves, it's going to go to the next boundary that direction and the next boundary that direction. And that's how it's creating that rib right there or that web, I should say. Very, very powerful tool. Okay, we actually have finished the features on this side. I want to now mirror them to the other side. So I'm going to create a mirror. And like I've shown before, I like to um, mirror features. Now, there's a lot of features. <laughs> And I need to go pretty far back into my timeline. And you'll notice as I'm hovering over things, it kind of highlights where they are. So I know, okay, so there's the web. There's, there's where I did the circle. So that's pretty much where I want to mirror all of this stuff right here. So I'm going to click there because that's the circle. There's the web, which is part of it. So I'm going to go all the way like so. And you'll notice it doesn't select like my sketches because it doesn't want you mirroring sketches. Okay, so I selected all of those features. I'm going to pick my mirror plane and watch what happens when I say OK. It doesn't work. I get an error message. Okay. Undefined error, face reference is lost, that doesn't help me much. And so I sat here for a while as I was practicing this. I'm like, why is this not le letting me mirror these features? And my guess, my conclusion is probably because of this combine right here. Okay. So kind of think about the recipe, what's happening and all kind of stuff. It's probably not very happy that this was separate and then combine, and then we're trying to mirror that separate and combine again. So I, I kind of struggled with this. I'm like, well, I want to mirror all of those things. Well, because this part is symmetric itself, I could try a different method. I'm going to say mirror. Instead of features, let's just mirror this whole body. What's my mirror plane? I'm going to click that mirror plane, and I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice that that worked. And the only reason that worked is because it is symmetric. I mean, it, and, you know, I didn't have anything over here that would have gotten destroyed by that. So this is a, a simple use case where it worked in this case. It might not work in all cases. The other thing you could try doing is maybe mirroring faces instead of mirroring features and see if you get different results that way. But this was a really quick method. Instead of just mirroring just the, the features, I mirrored the whole body. But you'll notice that we now have two bodies. Let's combine them back together. So base is going to be my target. Tool, the base one is going to be my tool. I want to join them together. And I do not want to keep the tools. I'll say OK. And we are back to one symmetrical body. In fact, if I turn the other body back on, we'll see they still match up. Everything looks really good. OK. OK, so now I want to create that little hole that goes all the way through the part uh, for the power cable. 
And I'm doing that after I mirrored the body, right? Because it's kind of right in the center. It doesn't make sense for me to mirror it after that. So I mirrored all the stuff that needs to be mirrored. And now I'm going to continue with my design. So I'm going to create a sketch on this front plane. Draw a quick circle here. Point, oops, point 0.5 in diameter. Making sure that that is lined up vertically. And I'm going to throw a dimension on here of 0.35. Again, using the uh, drawing here, do I not have that dimension? <laughs> I don't have that dimension. I apologize. I'll add that in there. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry. It is in, it's in this detail. So here's what we're creating. 0.35. Here's the 0.5 diameter circle. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to do pretty much the same thing we've done previously, I'm going to say extrude, start the extrude, instead of distance, I'm going to say to object, so it goes all the way to the object, and I'm going to do the offset plane again. So I'll come in here and say offset, and in this case I want to go 1.1 inches according to the drawing. It leaves a little bit of extra material there, but you can kind of see where would I, I mean, I would have done, done an offset plane, create a sketch, etc. I think this is actually a very, very useful tip. And I'm going to go ahead and join that together. Okay, well now I want a, to put a counterboard hole through here. And unfortunately, I can't use the hole command. If I were to say hole and click on this face, you're going to see it's going to want to put that counter bore at the direction of that face. So you can see as I move around, you know, it's basically going in the direction of that face. Well, I want it to go perfectly horizontal. And so I don't have the ability to do that using the whole command. So I'm going to have to kind of build this myself. So um, let me see what I want to do here. Okay, let's round this guy over, 0 0.03. I'm going to create a sketch on this face here and use that as a reference. So I'm going to draw the two different size holes that I need, 0.15, and I'll repeat my last command by dragging straight up. And this guy needs to be 0.33, like so. And again, personal preference, I like to drag these dimensions out so I can see them a little bit better. And I now have those two size circles. I can extrude, start to drag. How far? Well, I'm going to say through all. Or I could say to object and pick this outside face. But in this case, there's nothing in the way. So I'm going to say to all and it's going to go all the way through the part. I'll turn that sketch back on, say extrude, again starting to extrude how far? I'm going to say all, but this time I'm going to offset this. So I'm again I'm going to do an offset plane of um, minus 0.15 and you can see that it's now going to offset 0.15 and then do the extrude and so when I say OK we'll see that I ended up with a counterboard hole. That would have been very difficult to do on this weird curved surface so I, I used a flat face as my reference and then offset from there. I knew what this thickness needed to be right here between these two faces, this face and this face back here. So neat, neat little tip. Okay, I'm going to zoom up on here and I'm going to show another cool tip. Hopefully you already know this, but I'm going to say fill it 
and let's do a 0 0.02 fillet and watch what it does. So it goes around and it fillets that edge, but you'll notice because of the curvature of the surface, it's actually a little bit more narrow up here than it is down here. Okay, and again, that's just because of the curvature of the surface. It's doing a constant radius. If I come in here and say chord length, watch what happens to my fillet. So you can kind of see how it changed a little bit. In fact, let me make that a 0 0.02. What chordal length is doing is it's going to keep 0 0.02 the whole length of that edge or, or the chord. And so you're seeing it's not changing the size between the top and the bottom. So if you need that to be a very perfect fillet on a complex surface, this chordal length is really, really powerful. Okay, so I'm gonna do a chordal fillet on that one. Okay, might go a few minutes over, but not too bad. So pretty much have everything designed the way I want. I'm gonna turn this base with floor back on and the reason for that is it has these little you know indentations that I want to have happen over here and again instead of creating sketches and complex geometry I'm gonna use this body to modify that body so I'm gonna say combine what's my target well the target is gonna be the base the tool is going to be the base with the floor. Okay. I'm going to kind of zoom so you can kind of see what's going on here. I don't want to join them. I want to cut. Okay. So it's going to use that body to cut. Now I do want to keep the tool. So I'm going to say keep tools. I'll say OK. And let's turn off base with floor. And you'll see that it actually created that little indentation for this guy right here. So they'll snap together, okay? However, I see an issue <laughs> right here that I don't have any control over. So what happened? Well, this little rectangular part was you know too long and it cut into my little screw boss right here so how do we fix that let's go ahead and turn off the base with the floor I need to know how far it went so I'm gonna kinda zoom up and click on this edge and we can see that that edge length is 0 .099 so just under 0.1 Okay, well, maybe I could move that rectangle back. So let me just come over here. Now, to answer the question, I could go back, I should go back and modify my sketch. But because I created a lot of constraints and stuff like that, I would almost have to like rebuild this rectangle because I'd have to destroy these constraints. Or I could just come in here and say press pull and watch what happens. It's going to allow me to push that face backwards. And I know I need to go at least 0.1 or at least 0 0.099. I'm going to go just a little bit extra to make sure there's some clearance. And we can see that it moved that back, the 0.1. I'll say OK. We'll turn the base back on, turn off the base with floor, but those holes are still there. Now, why is that? Well, this has to do with how things were created in time. You'll notice that the combined cut is happening before we offset those faces. So that totally makes sense. It's using the geometry way back here to do this combined cut and then I'm offsetting those faces. So what I really need to have happen is I want these faces offset before we do the combined cut. 
So just by dragging this one step over to the left, you'll notice that that fixed the problem. Okay, so it's doing the offset and then it's doing the combine. So if we were to turn on the base with floor and take a look, that looks like that. We turn off the base, that looks like that. In fact, let's confirm everything by doing a quick inspect interference. I want to see if anything on this side is interfering with anything on that side. I'll hit compute. No interferences detected. So I know that this thing can fit together and there's nothing that's going to get in the way. We know that these holes are lined up with these screw bosses down here. We can see the power port, etc. So I will go ahead and save. And we are done. So I only went two minutes over. <laughs> so hopefully you learned some new tips and tricks with this. Um, I really like that extrude with an offset. Um, you know, instead of having multiple sketch planes or multiple sketches, you can use one sketch and do different depths of extrusions. You can have multiple features on that sketch and you know extrude them differently. So that extrude with an offset is really powerful. Uh, hopefully you also saw the web command um, being very, very powerful. Simplifying our sketches instead of having to draw rectangles that kind of define the, uh, the shape of the, uh, the web or whatever the rib you want to call it. We're just doing a single line and the software is extruding the correct distance, the correct thickness, the correct curvature all at once. So um, hopefully uh, Angela was able to answer your questions. I will go through and take a look at those. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and hope to see you on a future live stream. Thank you.